I did a video previously about how I set up KitOps and how I'd use it, but I figured I'd just make a video showing how I'd fix the inserts because, you know, there's some inserts problems. Of course, for this, uh, I'll need KitOps Pro in order to write a KitOps insert with the correct properties in order to be inserted correctly. So that is a variant from the uh, Pro to the free version. I'm just scaling this cube out and we're just going to C sharp it and then use B with, which will apply to scale and get this bevel to look just right. And we can control click bevel to actually add a second one, but I'm gonna control shift click it to add a second bevel at 60 degrees. You know, the more I do that, the more I feel like there should actually be a drop down asking for the degreeage, but um, that's for a, a hard ops discussion. So let's actually go in here and look at these inserts. So I want to find the insert that uh, embarrassed me in the last video. Um, you know, Jesus take the will on this situation. I just have to believe that latest sword is on. So we just bring this in and we'll be able to tell if latest sword is on because there will be a nice bevel around all the edges and we're just going to insert each of these pieces and try to find out what's going on. You know, these thumbnails are just not looking good. I'm going to have to look into that as well. So we're inserting the camera, testing out the latest sort. We'll undo. I didn't have the main object selected. So we'll bring in a button panel. We'll go to the next one and insert this one. In fact, I actually want to make my small scale something more reasonable. So I stop inserting these things incorrectly. Sometimes um, I just forget to use some of the kit ops. Awesome feet. Look at these detail. Look at these de uh, thumbnails. Just terrible. All right. We're dealing with that after this. So, so far, so good. Everything's inserting just fine. And this one is problematic. So this one's name is circular one. One of my favorite things about Blender is that I can just open another instance just right on top of the other instance and just keep on working um, with this being like a sub window in a micro universe is kind of how I look at it. But um, we're going to open up circular one and just open that file and we move that. That's looking good. And this isn't marked as the main object. So if we save that. That's probably all that's needed to fix this, except we do want to make sure that that's the cutter and that's marked as a solid. So if we come back here, we don't even have to close or reopen Blender, just fixed. So I'll be re-uploading that to the market after um, I get the thumbnails dealt with as well. Uh, some of these thumbnails look, actually some of the thumbnails are the classic thumbnails and that's why they look good. So that could be an idea, just put the classic thumbnails back on them. Just thinking out loud here. So while I'm just inserting things and test them out, I can also say that right now we are working on a major update for hops. Um, a small micro update was actually put out earlier. This is not an insert. That's a coupler that should be in the other inserts. Um, you know, I'm not even going to get into that. We'll scale this up. You can see that it's getting a little, little heavy because of all the bullions, but um, these particular subsets, I love them because the idea was to insert something that was heavy, but then insert something that was heavy, but have the cutter be simple. So that way you leave behind something great and you're not having to deal with all the repercussions of cutting in. Like say, if I had to cut this grill into this cube, we'd be talking a little bit more about cleanup, but instead we're just cutting in just the outline that embeds the form. So we didn't have the object selected that time, but so far so good. So it might've just been one insert having a problem. We can see that the sorting is just working magnificently. In fact, I'll select this and we're just gonna shift click weighted normal to add a weighted normal with sharp, which will uh, kind of fix our surfacing a little bit. And we'll just continue on our merry little way. Scales just not helping me here. There we go. 
So this one is like an elevator shaft. So when I insert this one, it's going to be pretty large, at least as far as uh, what it's bringing to the table. But luckily the cutter is simple. Uh, from the looks of those edges on it, it could be simpler. You know what? We're just going to place this one right here. And we probably have an extreme amount of uh, Boolean modifiers going here. This one's a classic. And by classic, I mean this one is animated. And this one's called Gear Set 1. So let's get in here and deal with Gear Set 1. So like I said, I'm using Gear, uh, KidOps Pro because we made it. Um, and Gear Set is actually a cool insert because like I said, it's animated procedurally. It was just an idea for, you know, all these inserts are like ideas for things to pursue in the future. So we'll save that. And now that it has the animated flag, when we insert it, it will annoy us by playing the timeline, which in a scene this heavy probably isn't the best idea. So that could be why animated was turned off. This one is a bunch of holes. So I could just tell you that it's not going to be an easy punch. You know, um, circles are computationally heavy. We talk about them all the time. Uh, you cut in a cube, it's like eight sides, I mean eight verts. You cut in a, a circle, it's like 32 by 32 multiplied by the amount of circles because everybody loves circles. Um, you, you insert one circle, you got to put 15 more circles around it. And we're back to our inserts where we started. So it appears that everything's working fine. We'll turn off a viewport visibility and we'll just kind of look over our surface and we can see that latest sort extending to everything is just working great. Kudos to Proxy on his work. He'll receive a sack of doubloons. Excellent work. I'm immensely proud that KidOps has finally caught up. I've been telling Chip for months that we need to update the sort in KidOps and that um, we'll get to, I'll get to that later, but, um, made me lose my train of thought there. But anyways, now that kid ops is caught up to hard ops and box cutter, as far as sort, things should be a lot more congruent with the workflows, uh, as we get more familiar with the non-destructive pipeline and work harder on, um, uh, creating a path forward on that. We also want the tools to be capable of supporting it. So even just this morning, we were talking about having step be um, a little more non-destructive in the non-destructive variant, giving options that are um, kind of allocated to um, bevel at this time, but we do want to extend on the uh, capabilities of step and make it more useful for the average user. But that's a lot to be talking about in this um, off topic kid ops video where I'm supposed to be talking about kid ops. Anyways, I hope everyone's enjoying the latest kid ops update. And with that, we'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. So I was preparing to replace all the thumbnails with the previous thumbnails when it occurred to me that I should actually use KidOps's built-in thumbnailer. So we'll just pop open Blender real quick and bring up that folder. And we'll just take a look at this one. Thumbnail, not my favorite look at thumbnail. So let's open this up, take a look at what we have here. This is our insert, bring open the end panel. And I'm just going to shift click this to import the render scene. Of course, past this point, I do not want to save the scene because I don't want it to insert the ground in all this garbage. And another thing about the render scene that I noticed is that at this time, there is no modifier for the bevel. So we'll just add one real quick, give it an equal amount of segments, I mean, even amount of segments. And we'll push that up above the weight at normal. And it looks a little odd there, but let's look at it from the render. And that's actually a good looking insert. This one was cool because it was adjustable. If we turn off auto select, we can select this empty and make adjustments. However, due to having to uh, hard apply everything to bring things into the render scene, that's not going to be an option to us, but we do now have the result that we want. In fact, I'll press Alt V and we'll turn on HQ just because I have a uh, NVIDIA GPU active. So we'll just render a thumbnail. Small weight, of course, due to uh, 
upping those shadow samples at the very last minute with the EVHQ coming in to save the day. We can uh, alt tab go back to this folder and now we have a much better looking thumbnail. However, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of how aligned it is. So let's actually auto select the insert and see if we can move it down to X just a little bit. Probably being a little OCD with it at this point, but we want that fine result. I just want to go through and show uh, my workflow when it comes to using a thumbnail or in kit ops as well. So we'll just give that a brief moment to conclude and we alt tab. And if we double click our result, we can see that we have a much nicer thumbnail courtesy of chip making a new render scene. So we'll open this one and this is our insert press in and we'll shift click this to bring it in and let's see what our render is looking like. You know, for the most part, all of these inserts are being placed pretty well with a pretty good scale. So I'm almost adventurous enough to try letting the auto thumbnailer try doing its thing. So we'll render the thumbnail. I love these lighting highlights and reflections that are happening here. I uh, feel Chip did a pretty good job on that. And you can see that without EVHQ, it's really fast. If I put it on EVHQ, the render will look a little bit better with um, you know cascading shadows and all that, but the render does take a bit longer. So we'll just wait for that real quick and bring up the folder just so we can see what our result is here. And of course the image looking just like the render looking great. We can move on to button panel, which button panel appears to be just gray. And also why are we in cycles? You know, I'm actually going to alt M and we'll just give that a blank material and let's see what we look like at render time. Maybe undo that. See what we're looking like. Is that what we had before? Let's go under file and revert. And let's look at it here. And this is what it's looking like in Eevee. So one of these materials is needing to be adjusted. However, I'm just going to actually remove them all since they are the same thing. And we're just going to assign a blank material here. We'll lower the clear coat and just adjust the roughness. There we go. That's looking a lot more buttony. So we'll press control S to save that. Press N and under the kit ops panel, we'll just shift click this to bring this in. And this one wouldn't have scaled right. So it needs our help just a tad. I love this one. This one is specifically the button layout of a copy machine. In fact, uh, looking at it, I'm not sure if I made all these O's like that on purpose, but from the looks of it, it looks like I did. If these were misscaled, then these bevels would be skewed. So back in the render view, no time for OCD on this. We'll click on render thumbnail. And you can see that this thumbnail just renders immediately with the settings that Chip has. And then I come through, put in my shadows, put in the fanciness, render it and have to wait a few seconds. But we'll get there. So once that's done, I can alt tab back to the initial window. We can look at our beautiful little thumbnail here. So continuing on, we'll look at cam cert and believe me, it'll get faster as we uh, get through this. Just wanted to look at some of these things one by one. They, they were modeled a long time ago by me. So, you know, some of, some of my old habits still die hard, like little notches here. Um, you know, we could actually improve some things. I think I see a geometric skew here. Nope, just a double. One of those has to go. Let's um, Alt H, bring that back. Let's just select everything and we're just going to merge by distance. And now this inserts looking a lot better. If we go into look dev mode, this is what our models looking like. So that's good enough. Press in kit ops shift click to jump into our render scene. I just love looking at the render scenes. It allows me to uh, just double check and make sure that uh, everything is working according to plan on this tool. So, I'm going to go ahead and just press Alt V, EVHQ. 
which really hit the scene very hard right there probably because it turned on the light showing so we'll just render that thumbnail alt tab back to the window and we'll get as far as probably circular one i believe the circular one had a pretty terrible insert but just wanted to uh, kind of show the process of what it's like going through and uh, just checking in on these. It is something that we have to do after major updates and across the board changes. For this one, looks great. I was looking at this edge thinking that, you know, it could be a little um, darker. But to grab that selection, we're going to have to be crafty. So I'm going to go on see through wire mode. Just grab that. Control L and shift H to hide everything except that and we'll hide that and select all of this and just give it the material geez there's a lot of materials in this file um, there's probably a little bit more cleanup that's needing to be done here so we can actually do that in the outliner so let's I was going to change that to an outliner but we have this text editor that would make a better outliner and we can go under blend file and under materials we're just going to remove all these materials that are not needed and I'm pretty sure we have a button in hops for this in fact before I do that let's test that so that is a material link normally it would link all the materials and then get rid of any sort of extras however if we check on this we can see that all the materials are linked but we still need to delete them so may improve it in the future just take care of that but that's a lot better we'll save that and they're having problems with this font so let's go there locate this font and delete that which will just make our lives longer so we're just going to not deal with that um, I'm pretty sure I have this font either on this computer or the main computer in the back so just continuing on we're just going to shift click jump to our scene and this is such a little camera and this is a lot more major than that so we'll just render a thumbnail and not destroy our text right now However, the lighting looks a little lacking, so we'll press Alt-V, hit it with the HQ, just to get some of those internal reflections. And we'll let that thumbnail render. So more than likely, the final results of this cam may be a little different with it using Blender default text, since I don't want to um, push in someone else's font, but I'm pretty sure I used default text when I was making this from the look of it. But continuing on, we'll bring back up our inserts here. And the final one that we'll look at will be circular. And we don't ever want to save once we're thumbnailing. So let's look at this in look dev. Looks good. Looks kind of strange. Always EV around here. So we're just going to shift click this. And this will just jump us over to EV and set up our render scene. Which I won't be asking any questions about that. From here, we'll jump over to our final render scene, press Alt-V. I always make a bad habit of sitting on look dev too long when I need to be judging my final render. So let's go ahead and render that thumbnail. Looking at this one, I can see that I probably should have put a subsurf on the circle and then bolt the uh, boxes to it and then let it have a uh, rounder finish. But this does make for a simpler insertion. If we turn off showing overlays, we can actually see just what we got here. So with that, we'll wrap this up. But I just wanted to show the process of going through and just messing with the uh, inserts and rendering thumbnails and playing with the thumbnailer for you Kidoffs Pro users who may be curious in how that process is. So with that, I'll wrap up this video.